All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hello there, Blog Talk Radio Land, and everybody from the United States. Clean on across the globe, baby, to Germany, Italy, the Caribbean Islands, and everyone else who's listening in between. Hello, and thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your love and your support. For without you, there is no me, okay? So, honey, I hope you got all of your crumpets together, baby, because, darling, you know what time it is. And, honey, it is time huh, to dish tea, and you're dishing tea, darlings, <laughs> with Big Meat. Hey, babies. Y'all, we down here in lovely old ATL. You know, it's a bit cool down here for the folks. Y'all know I'm, me being from Detroit and carrying on. Y'all know I can handle cold weather. But, you know, I've been down here now for about five years. And, you know, when it gets to be 55 and breezy, you know, the children don't know how to act or behave. You know, this is like a, a winter storm to them for a lot of them. So, yeah, we're kind of cool in this. That, and we're only going to get up to 70 degrees today. So, yeah, only. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, honey, I'm glad to be alive, and so should you, honey. If you're here on this day uh, to see it, to celebrate it, to smell it, to embrace it, honey, be glad, be about your business, because today's show, my darlings, is going to be one where um, the opening song, honey, Where Would You Be Without Your Freedom, honey, I think just sits, sets the tone, because... My guest today, honey, has had some, uh, one would think it shouldn't have gone to this particular length, however it did. And when we get into the story and when she tells it, you'll understand why. However, it is very important that uh, for those of you who are listening, I'm going to ask that, you know, you take and share this particular episode uh, with anyone. Check it in the archives and et cetera, et cetera, because we are in an election year and when my guests tell her story, I want this to be something that you weigh in on uh, in your thought processes when we're dealing with this year's election for uh, president of the United States. Um, I will say this, and you might, you guys can feel the, however you feel about it, but, um, you know, there's this whole big joke now because, you know, the campaigns and stuff and everybody wanted to make fun of Big Bird and, you know, why does Sesame Street have to come into play with this and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of you guys are missing the point. When we're dealing with today's educational system, one of the jewels that parents had to lean on or have to lean on is the PBS system. Shows like Sesame Street, uh, the Reading Rainbow, Nova for all of the sciences and carrying on, uh, uh, you know, the, the little discovery things that we have, uh, American classic uh, masterpiece theater uh, shows that we have, and all of that type of programming have been designed to be an extension of the teaching tool outside of the classroom. And in this particular instance, because we have a presidential candidate who boldly says that he wants to cut that funding, that there should have to be on the alarm system of everyone who values the educational system. Now, you may not think of, you know, the public broadcasting system being that way. However, I'm one who grew up on it. I'm sure many of you have grown up on shows like Sesame Street, The Electric Company, Nova, and all of those other uh, different uh, tools that we had. Hell, Mr. Rogers even was on public uh, access, or public broadcasting, rather, uh, during that time. So these particular shows and their programming are geared towards being an educational tool for the American public, and it's public broadcasting. So, you know, they get away from all of the, the spectaculars that we know on regular television and on the other broadcasts. So that there is a staple, and it is desperately, desperately needed in times like this. So with today's show, I call today's show, What is the Price of Public Education? What is the price of public education? Education, okay? So today's show is very, very, very important. So as you're listening, as you are uh, charting and flowing or whatever it is that you're doing, having your crumpets, getting today's tea, I'm going to implore you 
to share today's episode with every voter, everyone who has children in the school system, everyone who is concerned about the educational uh, system across our nation. It is in complete peril. And so that's why it is very, very, very important that we hear the story of my guest today. Now, before we get started with her, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, which to weigh in on today's show, I ask that you dial 347 205 9183. That's 347 205 9183. If you want to talk, just press the number one, and then that would light you up on my call queue. Now, just press it once. And that lets me know that you want to talk. Because if you press again, it's going to remove you from my call queue. Just press it once and your hand will raise on my call queue, and I know you have something to say, okay? The tea room is open. That's the chat room for those of you who don't know my language. It is open. So if you're listening by computer and wish to, and wish to intermingle with everyone over there, then please feel free to go right on over there. I'm going to ask that you please be mindful, honey. This is just, just, just the written word. And everything over there, honey, because we're basing ourselves on our own experiences and things, you know, we may think or feel that someone is doing the neck roll and trying to let you have it and this, that, and the other, when it could be all about perception. So while you're over there, I'm asking that you dish your tea responsibly, please. Please note, honey, that it is okay to disagree. Just please don't be disagreeable, because if you are, ha, I will come over and I will cut you, darling. I will cut Cut, cut you like I'm cutting some fabric, honey, to sew up the next new frock, okay? So <laughs> so please keep that in mind, honey. I don't want you guys throwing your computers in, at walls or cussing it out and things of that nature because you feel as though you've been ill or someone has, has came for you or something of that nature, okay? So please dish your tea over there responsibly. Now is the perfect time for me to put in my disclaimer, and that is dishing tea with big meat. Is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matters that you hear on Dishing Tea with Big Meech are not suitable for children or anyone who is not mature enough to handle the subject matter, so your listening discretion is advised. I will repeat that. Dishing Tea with Big Meech is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matters that you hear on Dishing Tea with Big Meech are not suitable for children or or anyone who is not mature enough to handle the subject matters, so your listening discretion is advised. Now, for those of you who know me, y'all know I have a potty mouth. I make no excuses for it. I've earned every 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 14, 24 syllable word that come out of my mouth. Okay, at this particular point of the game. So if you're at work, if you have children around, now is the time for you to govern yourself accordingly. Put your headphones on or turn and or turn the, the volume down so you're respectful of, about your neighbors and things around you. If you have children, now is the time to go turn on public access or public broadcasting, like we said, Sesame Street, Dover the Explorer, all of those things. Put them in their places so that they can go get educated and things of that nature, learn a few lessons while you guys sit down here and let let the adults talk, okay? So uh, I want you to do that because now is the time for the adult hour, okay? Okay, so you will consider yourselves warned because at this point, none of you bitches are going to be calling me, emailing me, writing me, texting me, stopping me at the train stations or whatever to tell me that you've been demerited or got rolled up or somebody talked about you or, or, or looked at you funny because you were listening here. You have been warned. Okay? Ha! Huh. Now, having said all that, at this particular time, I'm going to go ahead on. Hello there, guest number 2437 over there in the tea room. I see you over there, darling. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. If you want to comment or want to interact, you're going to have to uh, create a profile page. Yes, it's free of charge. Just go in there, create a, a profile page, and that way you can log in and uh, chat with everyone else that's in the room, okay? Uh, otherwise, just sit, there, sit back and, and, and as Miss Seeley say, I'm going to see what the wall going to look like, okay? <laughs> okay? So with that in mind, honey, I am going to uh, let me take a brief little uh, pause right here, pay a couple of bills, and say hello to a couple of sponsors, and uh, we will go from there. When I come back, we will be talking with my guest. Her name is Ms. Kelly Williams-Bowler, and she has been 
the subject of this whole great debate issue on the idea of being charged fraud with a felony for fraudulently um, using uh, for fraudulently discrediting the records uh, and using someone else's address just to get her kids into a better school district. So uh, yeah, when we come back, we're going to be joined by her, and she's going to tell her story in her own words, and then we'll go from there. So okay, I'll be right back after this. The Internet Sensation is now in print. Get your copy of the book that will not only change your life, but change your thinking as well. Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey, is a compelling collection of blogs that have been the pinnacle of spiritual development and discernment for its author, Internet talk show host, Big Meech. Not only does this body of work offer the insight from his life experiences, it provides the reader an amazing opportunity to go on a journey that will awaken insight into their own higher power while encouraging personal growth and spiritual development. With chapters such as, I cannot give you life, nor can I live it for you. Truth is a bad bitch. It's time for a career change. I am not your God. And in what love do you operate? You will be captivated and compelled to take the life lessons the book has to offer and apply them to your life. To get your copy today of Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey. Go to www.dishingtea.com or you can find it on the web at www.amazon.com or if you prefer an e-book, find it at www.smashwords.com Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey Are you ready? Are you ready for the journey? The Big Brothers Network. Yeah, men of color, men of size. The Big Brothers Network was created to celebrate the larger man of color and those who admire him. We intend to promote a positive self-image within our community and the mainstream population. Our goal is to embrace our differences, to inspire self-love, and increase camaraderie through positive, brotherly interactions. We intend to accomplish these goals through the BBN magazine, local and national events, and networking forums. For more information or to catch the latest copy of the BBN magazine, please go to www.bigbrothersnetwork.com. That's www.bigbrothersbrothasnetwork.com. The Big Brothers Network, men of color, men of size. Now, what went through your mind when you wrote Deployed on that envelope and sent it back? They were sending me and my dad bills every month. After we gave them, the after the state said leave the kids, uh, in the best interest of the kids, leave the, the kids there. Like I said, they were billing me and my dad every three weeks, almost $2,000, and he was billing my dad and myself that every, four, every, every month. And they were Why and did like you I said, deployed in well, the military? You know, my phase. family is in the military. They're from Fayetteville, Fort Bragg. And I just, I grew up, it, like, but I grew up. But you're not, and I'm, you were deployed. I know, but I think it was a stress. I was stressed. I was absolutely stressed out. I've got a school district coming at me. I've got a school district following me everywhere I go. I, I see them. I saw them. I, I got a school district calling my job, my livelihood, where I got to pay and, and, and feed my kids. I got a school district calling Metropolitan Housing. I have them calling me every, uh, telling me to come in every week. I have all this going on. I'm like, what, why not, what is so wrong? My kids aren't behavior students. They're not, be, they're not bad. They're little girls. They were little. They were good kids. They're not bad kids. I don't understand it. Oh, in 2005, we got a paper from the, from, from the child guidance telling us, look, come, look at our program. 
and then now you see us and you don't want us? No, I'm mad. I'm just, I'm hurt. Okay, now, mm-hmm. that's just a taste of what was going on, and what you heard there was a clip from the Dr. Phil show uh, when my guest was on that particular show. We're going to talk about that in a minute because I was a little pissed about that with Dr. Phil. However, uh, let me give you up to snuff. If you're just tuning in, honey, uh, thank you for your love and your support. Today's show is entitled, What is the Price of Public education okay today's episode is going to be a very explosive episode and it is my hope that this will bring about the momentum that we all need to fight for our national educational system in 2011 my guest has served a nine to ten day uh sentence for defrauding the Akron, Ohio School Board by falsifying her address records so that her children can attend a better school that was out of her district. The crime was labeled as a felony, and all of her credentials and dreams of becoming a teacher were thwarted due to this crime, quote-unquote. Ms. Kelly Williams Bowler uh, is here to set the record on track with what happened to her, how she was able to cope with dealing with all of this travesty, and how she was able to overcome all of the ridicule and the stigma of defrauding, quote-unquote, the educational system. Now, this is a really hot pot of tea, and without any further ado, honey, I want you to welcome, this is Miss Kelly Williams Bowler. Hello there, my darling. Hi, how are you? Honey, I am everything, and everything is me. (laughs) Okay. That's right. The better That's question right. is, honey, how are you? I'm moving forward, and I'm 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 blessed, and I'm moving forward. I'm all okay. Right. Okay. Now, you know, let me bring the audience up to snuff because I remembered this story, and uh, I had gotten an email from uh, Kelly, and she was like, "Honey, I really would love to talk with you, and to come on the show." Uh, with my story, and and she said, honey, Google me, and they get back with me, and I was like, oh, well, well, that's cute, you know, okay, well, all right, you know, let me see what this is about, you know, and when I Googled, I was like, oh, hell, yes, sonny, yes, yes, you know, I need you, because I want to really get into this, and the timing on this could not have been better, because as I said in the opening, you know, we are in an election year, and when we're talking about the educational system and when we're talking about what's going on now, uh, particularly with your case and, and, and everything, this here is paramount so that we can get folks in, into looking at the educational system from a different point of, uh, and a different perspective. So, darling, let me start with you. And let's first, let's take us back because I found some information here that did a timeline um, which I found to be rather interesting, because not only um, were you someone who had gone on to fight the school system, but there's a website called CrooksAndLiars.com. Mm-hmm. And on this particular website, honey, they compared your case with a similar case that was in Columbus, Ohio, and they're, you know, they want to put the race card in it because they're like, there was an, another family, uh, the Ebner family, who happened to have been Caucasian in this particular instance. But because of what they went through, they went to them and the, the same thing you did. They fought the system and they won. Now, with them, there was no jail time. There was no other time. There was no anything else. They they came to this without without. Uh, recluse without any kind of ridicule, without any kind of anything. So, you know, the whole idea to this is um, adding the race car to it that basically the school system is off kilter. There's not same regimen, same guidelines, same anything. So let's go back and take us to the beginning of your story, how it started, and, you know, just give us that timeline of what happened. Okay. The school year, uh, 2006, I had, uh, my dad lives like seven minutes away from me, but he lives in a township, and I live in the city. And we mm. both live off of a, off of a main, the one main road, Copley Road. 
So mm-hmm. I had had I had had some issues. Uh, someone had you know broken into my home, and you know, in my neighborhood wasn't safe. Um, as far as I knew, it might have been a stalker because my neighbors had mentioned this man being around my house. So mm-hmm. anyway, um, I was in college, um, and I I worked part time. I was a substitute, and I worked part time as an as a teacher assistant at a um, mm. local school. So. I um, made a decision to enroll my kids at my father's school district. Um, my dad was, he was sick, but he could definitely take them and make sure they got to and fro from the school bus, you know, safely. And that was right. my concern, was safety, safe, safety first for my children and education definitely. So right. that's, how it, that's how it began. Now, that was the first year. Um, the second year... In 2007, we started receiving phone calls from the secretary, the treasurer, the treasurer at the school. Mm-hmm. And and he, one day, I particularly, he asked me, um, are you at home? And I was at my, I was at my dad's house. And so I said, well, I'm sitting here in the, in the, li- in the living room, yes. He said, so if I come by right now, w- would you be there? And I, I said, well, yes, I, I would. And so he said, okay, but he, he never came by, you know, he never dropped by or anything. And so I thought that was, you know, peculiar. Peculiar. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yeah, so time progressed, and we received a letter, and they said, you know, you, basically, you know, basically, you don't live here, and uh, we, we found, you know, clear and convincing evidence that you do not reside here, and he wanted us to come in. So, so me, I, well, he wanted me to come in. So I went in, and my father came. He 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 attended the meeting with me. And then that in itself was a big ordeal because he they had an attorney there, the superintendent, and it just was really, you know, they didn't tell us, you know, that they had uh, an attorney there. We would have had an attorney, you know, to for, on my behalf as well. So as time went on, so, you know, we had the meetings in, and so we, we had to get, we, we went to get the grandpa- grandparents' power of attorney. So we got that. We gave it to the school. Um they didn't want the grandparent power of attorney, so they went to the juvenile court um, and they asked them to deny it. They they did not deny it until June. Well, in in Ohio, June the school year's over. So right, exactly. When they did, right. Right. So we. So I said, okay. So you know, I took the kids out and re re enrolled them back in the Akron school system and. Where and everything was seemed like everything was fine. Um, Eighteen months later, I remember you know we was, I received an indictment. I remember I ran to my dad's house. I was like, Dad, I got this indictment. What is this? You know, I, I don't know anything about the judicial system. I had never been in trouble. And my father, mm-hmm. you know, he had never been in trouble either. But he was older than me. He knew what the indictment was. So right, was right. Like, hmm. So he sat there and we waited for the mail to come for him. I walked out there. He had one, too. We had postcards, indictment postcards. So we was like, mm-hmm. oh, God, what's going on? So we go to, to so we go to court. We find out it's this, it's this school. And we were, you know, we were scared because we thought, well, I mean, it seemed like they would have um, more or less, you know, uh, want, you know, sued, you know, because we never, you know, I've, I've worked in the system. I've never seen anyone, you know, get indicted behind that, you know. So, you, right. know, you, know, you know, if you feel that we owe you X amount of dollars, you would have, you know, had a civil suit. It would have been a civil matter. So, exactly. So time progressed. Um, we went to court. Court kept, you know, kept getting delayed, delayed, delayed for all kind of reasons. The judge was having issues, all kind of things. So finally, um, we went to court. Uh, you know, the judge. And, and, and let me tell you something. When this happened, and and the word got out. I didn't know how to handle this. It exploded. And mm-hmm. it was just, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't think. My mind was just traumatized. I, I could not think because there was so much, it was so much going on. We had, you know, people, re, you know, calling reporters, you know, because education is very, it's very serious. And mm-hmm. um, and so I'm sitting there in the courtroom and the judge is telling me, you know, my, she's giving me my sentencing, and she's saying, you know, you have, um, you have, you have basically, you know, 
did wrong, and the punishment, we always felt the punishment just didn't fit the crime. You know, they wanted me to pay back the court costs, so that's what I'm doing now. Ten days in the Summit County Jail, I served nine of the ten days. Um, 80 hours of community service, uh, complete a mentoring program, um, maintain full-time work, 40 to 60 hours, um, you know, uh, what is that? Do not consume any illegal drugs. I've never done drugs a day in my life, so I didn't care about that. Uh, submit a random, uh, you know, uh, urinalysis test. Um, they wanted my DNA sample, uh, pay the cost of, uh, of, of this prosecution. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, now listen, if I was to do anything um, and get in any kind of trouble, I would go to jail for 10 years. Ten years, and and so you know it was like five. What is it? it was like um, five plus five uh, consecutive years. So it would be ten ten years. Um, it uh-huh. was two a felon. It was it was totally. It was actually it was three felonies that they had put on me. But they took when when the attention hit the fan, then they took off one of the felonies, and then so I was I still had two felonies. Um, I remember. You know, going. I remember when it when it happened. I'm just, you know, I'm looking at her, and I'm like, and I'm just thinking to myself, no, this is. I thought I was. This was. This is not. This is not. This is not real. This cannot, you know, actually be happening. Now, understand, me and my father both stood trial together. He right. um, was at the time 63 years old, and he, like I said, he was extremely ill. He had um, many. He had, had strokes and gout and hypertension, diabetic. He had everything, and so we. And he also had post traumatic stress, um, which I oh. developed later um in this, yes. Mm-hmm. And so, um while we stood trial together, we were just trying to figure this out. We was trying to, you know, actually, you know, get to dismiss certain motions and, and we we were trying to because the Ohio Department of Education has sent us a letter during the time my children were in the school and the, and, the, and the letter clearly stated leave the children in the best interest of the children, leave the children at the school. And now that's what the paper said. Now during the trial, right. they came. The attorney, um, uh, they, they asked for the attorney to appear. And when when it was time for him to speak, he said, "Oh, they really didn't mean that." And so I was like, "Well, how does it? What, what does it mean? <laughs> you know, what does it okay. mean? It, you mean it, it? It it doesn't mean that or not? You know, did did it mess up? You know, it was written. It was on paper. So." We was like, okay, so they've already, you know, got they already got him together. So they already, you know, they already taught, told him what to say. And like I said, so I got ten days. I remember I went off to jail. Um, my father, the juror, said no to him because he he had his own, you know, home and land, and and he was not the one who physically um, signed the children up. I did. So it was always a matter of did the punishment fit the crime, and you know that's that was my whole thing. Did did the punishment fit the crime? Mm-hmm. It's just the judge told me I was not going to ever finish school, and I and I, she was you know she said I, I, today I will make an example out of you. I don't know if you got some of that footage or not, because it's it's on, no. it's on it's on it's in there it's 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 on it's in if you Google my name it's in there, and she said that I would never you know ever educate anyone else. And or you know become a teacher, and that I will never. Um, and they wanted to make an example out of me, so that right there was traumatizing in itself. Because I work in the schools, I work with I work with children with disabilities and um, multiple handicaps. And uh, you know I've always I love kids. I've always I've always loved um, children. So I was devastated to say the least. And I remember the local papers were so mean, so cruel. Oh, they, 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 I don't even, now I don't know if you can go to Ohio.com and pull up some archives, but if you do, you, you, you're going to be amazed. I mean, they had, they had my my very first conversation when I called home. I found out because when I went to jail and, and they had me in the room and, and someone said, you know, you can call home. I was so traumatized. I didn't know I can call home. I didn't know nothing. I didn't, I was, I didn't, I just couldn't believe what was going on. So mm-hmm. I remember I called home. I could hear everybody was at my house. My family members, my cousins, my everybody was at my house. And and um, you know my babies. 
I, they were crying. I was I was talking to my daughters, and they were crying. And, of course, I was hysterical. I was crying. And I was just like, you know, everything's, you know, going to be okay. And, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I miss you guys already, you know. Like, you wouldn't even, right. it wasn't even eight hours or whatever. But I was just like, I miss you guys, and I'm crying. And but what I'm getting at is that they recorded that and put it, they, they put it on Ohio.com. And that's just, to me, I, I know, I know, I know that you know you, you 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 know when you get into the system like that you you have no um um privacy and you have no mm. rights. But some things you just want to you weigh out. I, I would think that you know you would weigh out certain things because to me my you know you got my babies they're minors and you got them on there you know for the whole world to hear them devastated and crying for their mother. Right, that, right. That to me was awful. So then I serve my time. Days go by. I remember, you know, I'm calling home, talking to my parents, talking to my dad. And my dad was like, you know, a lot of people know about this. I'm like, really? You know, I didn't I didn't know. I thought he meant, like, you know, here in Cleveland. He was like, no, mm-hmm. really, a, a lot of people finding out about it. And so I was like, okay, you know, because it's edu- this is all about, you know, all it was was about education. All it was, I just wanted my children to be safe and to be educated. That was That was all I ever wanted. I wasn't mm-hmm. trying to, you know, abuse nobody. You know, I, it's so many teachers that that I work with that their kids, they, they do the same thing. You know, I know people right now that got their kids at that same school that did what they did to me. They they they, they live out of district. You know, so it was just mm-hmm. there was a lot of things I wasn't understanding. It was not it was not computing. You know, but and it still does Huh? I said, for me, it still doesn't. But go ahead. Right, you know, and if you now if you play sports, it's okay. If you play football or basketball, mom's the word. Mm. You know, I had girls. My girls were just, you know, academically they were good, but that's it. They weren't sports. You know, they weren't boys, and they didn't play sports. Mm. So you know that Mm. that raised issues too. And then you know as time went on. Um, we discovered that during that time <clears throat> that um, all this happened with me, there were dozens and dozens and dozens of other people that it happened to, and the school said to take them out. If they had issues, they said just take them out, or they told them to pay X amount of dollars. But no one was indicted. So it, it just made me wonder. It's like, well, I mean, how do you just how do you just pick and choose who you want to, to go to the penitentiary. <laughs> okay, right. Because see, here, now here's the question. Because, um, what did you ever find out? How was it that they came after you? See, when when uh, that clip that I played from Doctor Phil pissed me off, and I'm gonna tell you why. Phil, in all of his splendor, <laughs> respectfully. Mm-hmm has a way of pushing everybody's nerve, okay? And he came across like he was judge and jury at the same time. Now, at one point, he's sitting up there saying, you know, I agree that the punishment don't fit the crime, but yet he's sitting up there acting as if he was the prosecuting attorney. I know. You know, and, and, and that it, got mm-hmm. up under my skin. I did not like how he how he talked to your lawyer, okay, on that particular program, because that was getting on my nerves. And I did not like how he felt as though he was trying to correct you. or his, I understood his point. His point was, well, you had to take responsibility of what it was that you did. And not one time did y'all not say that. Okay? Then, at the same time, during the time that you was on his show, you guys still had that appeal going on. So you couldn't sit up there and say, oh, well, yes, and this, that, and the other. Oh, if I had it to do differently, I would have. Because that would have fucked up the damn appeal. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So all mm-hmm. of that he was doing, girl, I'm telling you, when I looked at this footage, I was sitting up here, I was like, okay, I see, this is why I was not in that audience. Because I, I, when I lived in New York, I used to go attend, you know, talk shows and things and sit in the audience. And, uh, you know, I'm very vocal. And I would have said something because I did not like where he came from with that. Now, the question that he did raise was, 
you know, well, why is it that you put deployed on the envelope to send it back and this, that, and the third, and blase, blase? My question is, when you were going through all of that, and they were talking about the, the tuitions, and they were talking about all of this, that, and the other, explain the process, because a lot of folks don't get it. I got it. I got it, okay? Because the thing of it was, this you talking about a better school system that was feet away. The way the districts are designed, you guys, you, you said you and your father live on the same damn street. Okay, so what? He's in a different part of this avenue than I am. All right, so mm-hmm. you're talking about maybe four blocks. I'm between Woodward and Claremont, and he down between St. Jean and whatever. Well, we on the right. same street, but those little four blocks, you know, once you cross the street, you in another township or whatever the case may be. And because of that, now it becomes zip codes and this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. And it really doesn't make sense when it comes down to it. So just for all shits and giggles, yeah. tell us, <laughs> you know, what the what the process was when you got the bills and when you would, well, because I knew what it was, it was to shut them up for a minute. Okay, if they say, if I say I'm deployed, and, and that'll that'll hush them up. But what was right, that for you when you were going through that? I remember I came, I went home that night. I was, you know, it was late, and I had just, I went home. I checked my uh, mailbox, and I saw another um, bill, and I'm, you know, and I'm like, dog, you know. So I just, I sh- there was nowhere. I shouldn't have done it. But I was just so upset, and I wrote on the envelope that I was gone. I said, I'm overseas, gone. Just, you know, in other words, leave me alone. And, right. I mean, the bill was 850 for me and 850 for my father. And it's like, well, you know, you, you billing, the, you know, both of us. And it's 15, I mean, we just did we, $1,500. It was almost $2,000 a month. It's like, that's a lot of money. And I just, that was not a, that was not a strategic move, but, but I did it. And and I never said I didn't do it. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. It wasn't like I, you know, I never said I didn't do it. I just, I said I wrote it on there, and it was completely wrong. But I was so worried, and I was worried about my children. I was just worried. I had a lot on my plate. I was taking care of my father was ill, taking care of him. And, and mm-hmm. mind you, like I said, that was, our kids weren't even in the school anymore. I was, you know, it was time had passed. That's what I wanted to, okay, that's where I was going. Because that's what I thought I heard you say. After the whole do I diddy, and they said, okay, you said in June that they said no or whatever it was that they did after everything was over. Well, yes, in the Midwest, for those of you who don't know, the Midwest, we go to school until June. I'm from Detroit, by the way, so that's how I'm I'm, I'm very familiar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we go to school up until June. Being down here in the South, these kids get out April, May, or whatever. They, They don't stay in school as long as we do up north. So... When you sit up there and said that they didn't already, they waited until June and okay. So when you remove them from the system, okay, that's fine. They won't have, okay, I got to go do this. Okay, you don't want them back or whatever the case is, and y'all going through your okie doke. Why were they sending you bills then after the fact? Was this supposed to be right. some kind of restitution or what, or what, or what was, what was this supposed to have been? I don't I don't know what it was. I don't I never asked really? I, I never asked them, you know, what you know, what was the maybe it was, yes, maybe it was restitution because it was they wanted us to pay for the two years that the kid, children were, had been in the school. Sixteen hundred dollars or uh, it was eight fifty a month, so you know, it was almost two thousand a month. So they wanted us to pay that back. But they wanted us both to pay it back, you know, at the same time. And it was just like, you know. And, okay, that's, okay, so wait a minute. They, did they split it per child, and that's how your father got to be, got a bill as well? Or are right. you telling they, me they, they were double it. billing? They were double billing. Yes, he had his own name, own address. I had my own name, on my own address. What? For both, and, and it was for both children of mine. I had two kids, you know, I had two kids. So, right. But um, it was. Well, it was okay. Just, it was, ooh, 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 ooh. Now, okay, wait and, a minute. And, go, but, and let me go let ahead. me explain go something. Ahead. So now, I want to I want to get back to that. But now listen to this. So they couldn't find my father guilty on that because he didn't enroll my kids. 
and they could not uh-huh. find him, and they and they and they dismissed the charges of uh, grand theft because he had his own home. He had built his own home on that land, you know, in, in Copley Township. So uh-huh. what they did was they filed other charges on my father, and they said, "Well, you didn't turn in information on your wife's income for disability." Now, mind you, my father had, had strokes, and, and he had he was his mind was not strong. Now he used to be a very strong, uh, very very smart man, but he began deteriorating within the last I don't know seven years. So what they did was, so the judge found him guilty on that. They sent my father to the penitentiary, to a place where he had never been before, and they jumped up the ch- the charges was over cr- crazy, saying how much money he owed for his disability because he was receiving uh, disability, and. Mm-hmm. And mind you, mind you, the doctor put him on disability because he was very ill. I mean, he could he can use his, his hands, you know, and his mind was mm-hmm. messed up. And so he sent him to the penitentiary where that's like a what's what it called shell shock. So a shell shock right. system. Within within three months, he stopped walking. And I remember one day he he called me. He said, "Kelly, I can't walk." And I said, "Well, Daddy, I said it's okay." I said, I'm your leg. You're going to be all right. Just, I wanted him to be strong enough to make it. I thought I thought he would live. I, th- I really thought he would. To look at him, you thought he was stronger than wh- what he was, but he wasn't. So he stopped walking. Then he went blind. Three months later, what? January. Feb- yes, three, four months later in January, he um, fell into a, he had, he had several strokes. And, oh, well, wait, wait, when he stopped, let me back you up. When he uh, stopped walking, he received, he got something called C. dip. And C. dip is when you, when physicians, when they don't wash their hands from patient to patient. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and so they they don't wash their hands from patient to patient, and you get this thing called C. dip. And we were like, what is C. dip? We had never heard of that. We had to Google it, look it up. It was like, you know, some kind of like a bug or virus. So, Mm -hmm. okay, so. And then that's how he that's how that happened. Okay, but then as time like I said, time progress time went on and in February he they asked for early judicial release and they denied his early judicial release. He fell into a coma. Had he had many strokes, many, many strokes. He fell into a coma. He never woke back up. Um, we had a doctor asking the doctors from the Ohio uh university they were asking, please, you know, let him go home. You know, and just it, it was so political. That's what I'm trying to say. It was so political. Yes. Uh, because behind me, it was behind my behind everything in the education that they would not let him out. They didn't care. So they had him. I would go visit him, and they had him shackled to the bed. This man was in a coma. What? This man had Where was he going? You understand me? His kidneys had failed. They had machines up to him. They had a breathing machine down his throat. What you know? Why was he there? Let him go home. Let him come. Let him go to a nursing home so we can. So he, he had never been away from us day in his life. It's every it, it, this whole thing killed him. It's education. Oh my God. It's, just, it's, it's just education. He died May tenth. I got a call at three o'clock in the morning. My mother called me at 3 o'clock in the morning. She said, the doctor said that we need to get down here as soon as possible. And I'm like, no. I'm thinking, no, no, he's going to be all right. He's going to be okay. He's going to be all right. And and he died. Three weeks before he, it was time for him to be released. What? Man See, this is the part of the story. Wanted, no one has ever... said anything about this part of the story. I, what? All he ever wanted was he was a protecting man. When he was in his heyday, he he was he provided. He was strong. He loved us. He loved this family. He kept us together and strong. I, oh, wow. Okay, wait a minute. I, I, 
Ooh, that that that's tearing with me. Let me take a quick little break. I oh my god. Oh, okay. Let me take okay. a quick little break. I will be right back because we wow. Ooh, children, children. Okay, y'all want to play politics? Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Mm. Pharaoh's treasure box. Fine art. Unique jewelry and sensational 3D silk floral arrangements. Creations by Taps. For all of your decorative needs, contact Pharaoh's Treasure Box at 248-688-5178 or 5179. Again, that's 248-688-5178 or 5179. Or you can email at Pharaoh's Treasure Box at yahoo.com. That's Pharaoh's Treasure Box, P H A R O A H S, Treasure Box, at yahoo.com. To see the collection or to purchase, go to www.buysellcommunity.com forward slash store forward slash Pharaoh's Box. Again, that's www.buysellcommunity.com forward slash store forward slash Pharaoh's Box. And that's P-H-A-R-O-A-H-Z Box. Pharaoh's Treasure Box of Detroit, Michigan. Fine art, unique jewelry, and sensational 3D silk floral arrangements. The Caribbean American Boys Entertainment. We specialize in jerk and conch food catering, party promotions and emceeing, entertainment with the Caribbean swagger, island fever on the mainland, bam bam. <laughs> we also provide customized tour guides through gay-friendly Bahamas to all the hot spots of dining and club life events. Mr. Savano T. DeMarco is the founder and CEO of the CABC. For more information, please contact him at CaribbeanBoysATL at Yahoo.com. That's CaribbeanBoys with a Z, ATL, at Yahoo.com or on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Savano T. DeMarco. That's Facebook.com forward slash Savano T. D-M-A-R-C-O. Caribbean American Boys Entertainment. Island Fever on the mainland. Bam, bam. If we're back on our feet. Okay. That's not a filibuster. Now, Dr. Brian Goldberg is vice president of the Beverly Hills Board of Education, and he's here today. So, uh, Doctor, you, you see this happening here, and you know from your, your colleagues around the country that this happens a lot. Yes, this is a problem that's not just in Akron, Ohio, or in Beverly Hills, uh, California, but across the nation. I do want to bring up two important points I think haven't been raised today. Uh, as a trustee for a school district, we're, we're working with a very limited budget. And part of the problem with this case that I see in Ohio and that we have here in, in Beverly Hills, we're spending education dollars on residency fraud. And I think that a big part of this that's missing is the fact Beverly Hills spends over $100,000 a year on an investigator for residency fraud. That doesn't include all the staff time that goes into that. And I think a piece that's missing from this by um, uh, this parent fighting all the way, taking it all the way to the court, is all the education dollars that were taken from that school district to defend their position. We have residency fraud in Beverly Hills. We've had 61 students who have been uh, removed from the school district just this year. We have 4,700 students in the district. Not one of them have fought us on once they've been found out. Had they, it would have incurred additional costs that would have taken directly from the classroom. And as we all know in California, the situation with public education, we're laying off tens of thousands of teachers across the state, that any dollar that we can keep in the classroom is a dollar that benefits students. And I'm really disappointed that this case was taken so far because I know for that school district and that school board, it took valuable dollars out of the classroom. Right. Okay, we are back. And if you're just joining us, honey, we are talking with Ms. Kelly Williams Bowler, whose case had become a, a national sensation as she was prosecuted and charged with a felony for defrauding the Akron, Ohio school system by utilizing her father's address 
so that her children could go to a better school in uh, that was outside, quote unquote, outside of her district, so that the kids could have a better education than what they were receiving within her current district. And uh, we had just uh, heard that she was telling the story about what had happened with her father and how through all of this, this particular situation and wanting to make, and I'm going to say it like this uh, because I'm beginning to feel this way, that whatever reason this was for them to, to send out the lynch mob and that we're going to make an example out of you. As a matter of fact, I did hear that clip with the, with the judge saying, I'm going to make this an example. Um, that went across the board there because not only did they come after her, but then it, while during their quote-unquote investigation, they end up charging her father with stuff that had nothing to do with this because they couldn't charge him with this. So they went back and found other charges and, and, and had, you know, this, that, and the third, arrested him and basically end up killing him because of what it did to him, his spirit, being incarcerated, being within that system, and already being sickly. It just caused him to go into a demise, and and ultimately he succumbed to the the stress of all this. And it hurts my heart because I did not know that uh, in this particular piece that I'm reading, um, it did not say that uh, um, your father had uh, passed on. It was just saying here, this is in the uh, the Black Enterprise article that was just released on October 10th of this year. And it was saying that he had been incarcerated on unrelated charges, but it did not say that he had had taken his demise. He was 65 and not in good health, is what the um, the article has said, and that he had been uh, in jail since June. And so I'm having problems because uh, I'm just having problems with this because here's the thing, and I and I and I want to get your take on this because again I'm tying all of this in with our current presidential election because we've just heard during the presidential debate that the candidate for presidency, Mr. Mitt Romney, has keep saying that he wants to fight for education and he wants to make sure that education is on the forefront and not one time. Uh, has he said he's going to cut funds and this, that, and the other? And he said, I want to make sure that children are able to go to the schools that they choose to go to. He wants to make sure that parents have the right to do that and make sure that students are able to go to the schools of their choice. Now, how in the hell... Do you go to the school of your choice when you keep letting the states and everybody make districts and then say that because you're out of this district, you cannot go to this school? I'm having a problem with that, and then we're saying that the education system needs to be fair. But yet, just because I'm four blocks away, all the money is going to this school, but then you're not putting money in this school. I wouldn't have to come over there if the opportunities and things were this, it were the same in this particular school. Now, when you, what was your research to find out about that particular school, um, uh, and and to find out its educational qualities? What, how did you come across that school? Was it bolstered across the, the state of Ohio? Uh, you know, was it the academic schools? How did you come to know that that was a good school? Well, my, my father had told me about, you know, he lived in the uh, township and he uh-huh. told me about the school. So I just went by his word. I didn't do, you know, like serious research. I just, you know, he knew because he was, he was up on um, statistics and everything. So I, I went by his word. And, and, and that gentleman from Beverly Hills, the superintendent, um, it, it made me wonder. See, when when things are happening at the moment on that show, when it was happening at the moment, you don't you don't register, you don't take things in certain ways, or or right. I didn't particular, I did not. And then you know, once you leave, you're like, well, why didn't I say this? Or how come I didn't do that? Or you know, or because you know, I, first of all, I had never been. <laughs> it was just a whole different arena for me. Now mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. said that I fought. The, he said I fought the system. I'm thinking to myself, I didn't indict them; they indicted me. So right, that's, okay, that's, and that's. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a, I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure that one out because I'm like, wait a minute. I was um, I was 18. It was 18 months later. I'm I'm you know I'm going on you know living life or whatever and and uh, you know working and providing for my family. I didn't I, I didn't I didn't I, there was no fighting and it's just, it's just amazing. How right, that's the part that I'm having trouble with. Why did they wait so long? to sit up there and trump up these cases because, see, listening to the Dr. Phil show, okay, they made it, all of that sounded as if, okay, they came to you and said, you know, we done found out you in the wrong school district. You need to get up out of here, take you and your kids. Y'all get up out of here. You go back down at that little trifling school that you came from, and that's what you're going to be. Then it sounded like you went, you know, got that girlish on them and said, no, no, that ain't going to work. And, you know, you're going to kick us out of here. Then never mind. I know what to do. I'm going to fight you. And that's what they made that sound. Like it went like, okay, no, since you're denying me, I'm going to fight it. But you said, no, that ain't the tea. The tea is they told us. Okay, we're not going to allow this. That was in June. You said, all right, we removed the children. I had to go back, and, you know, we, we, we muddled up and found out where to get the kids back in school since they don't want you there no more. Now, life is going the way it's supposed to, and now you come hit me with all of this and then go and tell me I got to go to court. And and so, right. you know, I'm having a problem with that. And then with this with the clip I just played, what pissed me off with this particular clip is, You know, he's like, well, as a treasurer, we do this and we do that. My question becomes, who is it that pays a damn private investigator to come and stop? What was the tip-off that said, let's look into this case or let's look into this or let's – I don't understand how they tip this stuff off to say that we need to look at residential fraud because, hell, for years when I was in school – I was way out of my district in high school. I lived over, I was in between three different high schools and had to catch a bus an hour and a half on the city bus over to the school that I started in because I graduated from, well, I, once I, when we moved in the ninth grade, I transferred from Southeastern High School to Cody High School, and I stayed at Cody. The school system had started in September. I moved, we got in in October. So from October 1983 to June 1987, I stayed in one school. So mm-hmm. I caught the bus out of district, out of everything, over to that particular school. They knew my address and this, that, and that, and it wasn't a problem, so, so, so we thought or whatever. So what is going on with these particular districts that seems to be having a problem? Now, I was also uh, under the impression that they were saying that that tuition for that school was $30,500. Were they trying to mm-hmm. tell you, that, what, was that the installment plan that they wanted to make you pay back? Right, exactly. You you hit it right there on the nose. And and as far as you just said it, that was it. And as far as the district jumping or, or, or you know, at my school, I mean, there's kids right now when they talk to me or they talk to me over the course of this all, you know, because I still work for the schools right now. But uh-huh. and, and that's that's another whole thing because right, as we speak right now, they want to suspend me because of what happened. They want to suspend me for six months, and they want me to work in another district for, for free while I'm on suspension. That right there what? is going on right now from the state. Yes, yes, from the state. Because, and, and my attorney said the only reason why this, he said, he, both, I have two attorneys, and they both said the only is propaganda. They were just like, we just, we don't understand this method behind them wanting to spend you for that long of a time and have you volunteer at another district while you're on suspension. Like, I don't have no family to provide for. So, I mean, but um, but what I was getting at is that a lot of the kids, uh, they tell, they come to me all the time and say, you know, I live on the east side, and I'm not supposed to be here, but, you know, pe- you know people do it all the time. So we just try, you know, we try to figure certain things out, like why, why did they take it to that level? I'm trying to understand that because now, now let's take let's, let's take that 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 treasurer's money uh, issue to heart because with the, with the amount of schools that have been closing, with the amount of schools and 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 I know in Detroit, honey, they're notorious for not wanting to give out supplies and stuff. There was a whole big expose a few years ago that they had school books and things still in the warehouse in the packages. They didn't even pass the damn school books out. 
kids sitting mm-hmm. up there, you didn't even got enough school books in the classrooms. But y'all done spent all this money for materials and did not pass them out to the school. They sat in the damn warehouse so long, the damn books became obsolete. Do you hear what I The books became uh, brand new books. Hey, the, the spine ain't been cracked, ain't been nothing. They still in the, in the warehouse on crates. They sat there for so long, the damn things became obsolete. The school didn't, well, outside of those who purchased them or whatever, the teachers didn't even know mm-hmm. that they had books because we, we sent up there old books, old textbooks, pages that have been ripped out, this, that, and the third, and they had the stuff there. So I know with the school system being in the perilous time that it's in, who in the hell got money to pay for a private investigator to sit up there and talk about some residential fraud? I I cannot wrap my mind around that because that just seems like it is a waste of money all day long. It, it is, and the thing of it is, is that if you, you know, the dollars should follow the student. Understand, they got dollars from the state regardless, but they wanted me to pay them. But they got dollars from the state. The, 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 each, each head count, you get X amount of dollars. I was just about to go there. Anyway. I was just about to go there because that was the importance of the fourth Friday count. The fourth right. Friday count, and that there, I believe, is, is standard. That's a national policy, I believe. Yeah. That's, the, yeah. that's the count where we see how many students we have in this school so that we know how much money to get from the federal government. So why is it that tuition – became a factor because they were trying to talk about the taxes and you ain't paying the right taxes in this district or whatever. What was all of that? Well, I was still confused with all of that. But just <laughs> like I said, the dollars follow the the dollars follow the students. They follow them. They got money for that. Now now mind you, that was just remember I told you I had two felonies. That was just one of the felonies. The other felony was um I had I, I, I was working part time, so I didn't have the the um, the money to pay for my daughter's uh, lunch for their lunch. Mm-hmm. So what what so what we did what I did was I signed them up for um, the free lunch you know, program. The lunch pro- yeah, the, mm-hmm. the lunch program. So now, mind you, when when during the court during court they show how much money I made. The prosecutor showed the dollars that I made both years. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh-huh. tell you how much I made. It, one was less than two two thousand dollars because I was subbing, and the other one uh-huh. was I think the other one was two thousand or something. Okay, because I was subbing and I just you know, do you understand? They gave me a felony because they said that I did not. Um, they what did they say? They said I didn't lift every penny. Like uh, no, it wasn't that. It was something that they said I didn't lift on the application. It's like well, I mean I. Goodness gracious, I qualify. And understand something. When you when you work, when I've been working in the system, anytime uh, the, the the people in the cafeteria they got a question or you know about um, your application, by process they are supposed to ask you, is this correct? You know, or what about this? You know, whatever. I made a mistake on my application, and they took that and took it to the prosecutor. Now, mind you, I just told you. I didn't even I didn't make anything. So how do right. you give somebody a felony should be for what where was the intent? There was no intent. Right. I wasn't I wasn't trying to get my daughters a free hot dog for for and I'm making uh, you know, I'm making five thousand or ten thousand or, or I'm making twenty thousand you know, it's ridiculous. It was the whole Lord. the whole ordeal was the you know, the whole ordeal was over the top. Okay, now here's here's here's, and uh, the Dr. Field show, uh, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton came in, and I know that they were uh, he and National Action Network was were instrumental in in helping with the fight. Who else came on board to your defense, and what's going on now? You know, who are the leaders, and you know, what about Steve Perry? Because you know, uh, Doctor Steve Perry, out of uh, I think he's in New Jersey or whatever. Uh, you know, I call him the the, the Joe Clark of uh, this generation, and what he's doing mm-hmm. with the educational system. Uh, and for all of those folks who are, you know, what about the folks from the from the uh, Where Superman movie? You know that 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 are. 
that are pioneering for a better education system. Who has come Water. to you and said, girl, let, let, let's take this on. What is it that we can do? You know, let's look at these particular laws, find out where what's going on. Who what, what's what's happening? Well, I, I did have I did have a lot of people reach out to me. Um, no one uh, wanted to uh, go into the laws, and, and that's something that I want to definitely address, like residency laws and grandparent rights and wanting uh, and parent choice. You know, parent choice. But now I, I had people reach out supporting me, like Reverend Al Sharpton, like Reverend Jesse Jackson and his daughter Santita, and you know. It, 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 uh, change dot com, uh, change yeah, change dot com, and I think the color of change dot uh, org. Um, you know, many many different people out, uh, you know, reached out. Um, especially during the time when, uh, right after I got out of jail, and they they set up a petition, and I had over three thousand three hundred thousand petitions um, on my behalf uh, from people across the country and overseas, in Japan and China and India and uh, Canada. Oh wow! So, oh wow! Yeah. I've had, it was a lot of people that reached out on my behalf, so that was that was uh, wonderful. But as far as like um, you know, changing the law, I, there was no one um, that looked into that. You know, but that's something that I want to get into the legislation and 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 making sure that grandparents have rights for their children if they need if they need anything, if they need medical, if they need you know enrollment in the school, they should be allowed to have that right. And parents, you know, parents' choice. I want right. parents to be able to go from, you know, if they if you if you live or if you live in one area but you work in another area, and if you feel it's more convenient, safe, or education, whatever your reason is, you should be, you know, if you want your child where you're at or what's convenient for you, it should happen. Exactly. Over here in the tea room, uh, I believe this is pronounced Pianchi, has said that's why school choice should be a priority. And I agree that it's, that school choice should be a priority. We just have to do do away with all this districting. See, that's the problem. And see, I'm having I'm 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 not as politically savvy as I ought to be, and I'm not one who follows. You know all of that stuff like Roland and Roland Martin and all those kids that want to sit down and and do political analysis and carry on. However, you know having been someone who has fought with the school system and has dealt with uh, being out of district myself when I was in school during my years, and et cetera, et cetera. Honey, that was that was that should have always been the thing. If this particular school has has uh. Uh, the the educational requirements that that is needed. Then how come a parent can't go over there? There, like in Detroit, you know, there there are the schools that were supposed to be the superior schools, and you know, there were waiting lists to get in that school. So you know, you may want to put your child on the waiting list, and that there is something different because you at least you had the choice because they were full to capacity or whatever. I understand that, but right now when you're dealing with districts and carrying on that there. I just I have a problem with that, and if there is no national policy on that, and you leave it up to the states, it all becomes about money again. Because now the states are looking at okay, if we have these particular districts, it becomes classism and it becomes racism all over again. Because here we just sit up there and look at this from from a standpoint, and nobody likes to throw the race card. However, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, on this this article here on crooksandliars dot com, when they sat down here and 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 compared your story with this Ebner family, it's damn near the identical story. The difference mm-hmm. is this family had a little bit of money. They were in, um, they were he owns a home that was valued at more than one million dollars, but he rented an apartment in in the Beckley School District or whatever. And so he has family members and now they sit up there going back and forth with with interchanging the houses. Right. Okay. I heard about they that. They say in, mm-hmm. Yeah, and this was a year prior to you. Now this was in, in December of twenty ten. So this is a year prior to you that all of this just went on. And so they sued they say in June June 
The private investigator watched Ebner go through this. They saw him at the house in a T-shirt and sweatpants, and he left later in a dress shirt and a tie. Uh, the Beckley's attorney concluded that Ebner had abandoned all pre- pretense of living at that apartment by then, uh, by then because the school was nearly out for the summer. So now they're sitting up there making all this, that, and the third. Okay, now you got a summer home. Okay, the kids are there. They're out for the summer, so now you're over here. But they went on to fight, and then he won. He ended up wondering. They said, why didn't he go to jail? Well, they hired a lawyer and fought back and won by swapping around houses with another family member because that family member had a house. They had all the mm-hmm. money to do that. All in the family um, all in the family only works if you have money and you're the right color eventually. Now, this is commentary from the person who wrote this article. However, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's the exact same case. You were out of district. And they came to find out that you didn't live in the district, and this, that, and the other. Now, how come they didn't send this ass to jail? <laughs> I'm having, I'm, I'm, girl, look now, you know. And it make you wonder, but you know, so many people ask me, was it, you know, when I went before the parole board, they asked me, um, and that was a whole, oh boy, that was a whole other issue in itself when I went before the parole board, but they asked me. Um, you know, do you think it, it was prejudice? And it, it, it was. If, if you ever read, uh, I know the dialogue. I know that the dialogue is out there somewhere. If you ever read that, you, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, wonder you, to yourself, why did they keep asking her that? I mean, they they kept asking me, do you think prejudice? They wanted me to inflame. And if you know, and and you know, what I understood is that you know, you can't. I, my attorney caught me from the very beginning. He said you cannot touch on that at all. You know, you just you just can't. Don't you know? And and you know, and, and honestly, I can't tell you that it was, if it was prejudice or not because I wasn't in the room. I, I don't know what they discussed. I don't know their personal feelings. You know, right? Know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And see, and 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 the the news uh, reporter that was on the the show with you guys on Doctor Field that 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 was heavily attacking uh, uh, Reverend Al. Um, you know, that there was, 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 was really what his standpoint was. And basically, that's basically what he was saying. You only hear because it's the cameras and, you know, this is a black woman going through all this with her children. And then Dr. Field said, well, had this been a white woman, would you still be here? Mm-hmm. And he said, because it, yes, because this no, is not no, about color. This is, no, I, this was about the educational mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. That, no, let me tell you something. That man still, to this day, just not even a month ago, he, he wrote an article in regards to my to me and my father. I mean, he's just, that man has a hate, he has hate blood in him. He has his veins run with hate. I mean, he's just, that man has a fury behind me. I don't know what his deal, I don't know what his deal was. His name is Bob Dyers. I don't know what his deal is. But he, he got some, he got some major issues, um, as far as when it, when it came down to this. Now, remember, I don't know if you knew this, that man lived in Copley Township. Oh, he lived, was he that lived right? So he, yes, he lived. He know, he know, he know, he know the school, okay? He, he knows the school. He knows the, the people on the board uh, there. He knows the administration. And they're all, you know, hooked up together. So he, he was working for them, you know? And I you know what, know, let me... And, and, I, didn't, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he was going to be there. I wouldn't have went. Because he taunted and he harassed me so bad. He wrote every day. He wrote something about me every day. And it wasn't, if you, if, if you just see what, you know, when you Google it and you see it, I mean, he was just hateful. Ooh. Now, here's the question. Did they ever in the court sit down or has anyone given you what the ratio of black to white students are in that school district? I know that the lady that came on said that it was a very diverse district and, you know, there's all these different ethnicities and, and carrying on, and that's what made the school one of the successes that it is, is because uh, it celebrated diversity. However, with everybody trying to make this a race issue, did it ever come up what, what the, uh, the ratio was, blacks to white students? Um, you know what they I, 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 they did, and I don't I don't know what the numbers are right, right now. Um, but I, it was majority. It was majority. It wasn't black. It was majority white out there. 
Okay. Definitely. Over here in, in the chat room, Pianchi, he says, again, black children are used as a as a commodity in public school environments. The teachers' unions use intimidation towards politicians to kill any movement that parents and stakeholders suggest. He says, like Paul Robeson in Detroit. Oh, Pianchi, you from Detroit. Okay, that's cute. Uh, in September, <laughs> the building had an opening for 100 seats and over 10,000 applications for the traditional public schools. He says, I know, or she, I'm sorry, I don't know your gender. I know of cases where some schools would pay white students tuitions to a Catholic high school so they could participate in the sport. And that's what you just said. You just said that. Mm-hmm. About the sports yeah. thing, because your, your your girls were not they're not boys, and they wasn't in the sports system that it, it became an issue, and mm-hmm. so it begs to differ now. See, now here we go. Now here we go. Now they don't want to bring race and color and stuff into this, but a lot of black students, because they have this ability to be good with ball or whatever, as long as you can make this school look good on these damn teams or whatever, everything is hunky dory. Mm -hmm. I'm not understanding that when we're sitting up there talking about the academics. How do we raise a school or students and prepare them for this economy that needs to be fixed uh, in certain areas? And and I say that because I know we have economic issues, but, honey, we're not as economically unempowered as folks want us to believe because in certain areas, shit still thrives. You see these folks that are wrapped around the corners to buy Jordans and carrying on, but yet they can't pass a drug test to get a job. But that's a whole nother show. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Anywho. Uh, how do we uh, uh, expect to raise a nation of of good thinkers, especially now that we are in a technological age. Everything is math and computers. You have to understand math to understand a computer, child. Everything is about formulas and and things. How do we expect to do that if everything still comes down to sports and athleticism? Because now you have to pay for the sports because they took a lot of it out of the schools. You don't get, you know, parents now. Okay, they bribe you with scholarships and things and say, oh, your child can do this, your child can do that, and we need them on this team and blah, 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 and he has the opportunity too. But then that becomes that investment because you got to buy the cleats and you got to buy the shoulder pads and you got to buy the uniform and you got to buy the helmet and you got to make sure they get to this and you got to make sure. Where is their money coming from? Where is it coming from? And you got me over here at a $7 or $25, $7.25 job. And and I got to pay rent, and I got to sit up there because I got the food stamps. You gon you gonna cut the food stamps because I got the little job, or because my child that got the little summer job. Now you gonna cut the food stamps again because he got the little summer job, and that's supposed to offset. Hello. Is supposed to be the solution. Now I'm gonna ask you this, and I know I'm talking a lot, but this is. No, you're fine. I'm I'm right there with you. Here's the thing, because um, what has become – wait a minute, let me play this. Let me play this first, because the governor did – they pardoned you. However, I thought they had exonerated you, and they didn't do nothing but just lessen the damn thing. And 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 after mom's felony convictions have been reduced to misdemeanors, but her punishment remains the same. That's the decision by Ohio Governor John Kasich, who today reduced the conviction of Kelly Williams Bolar for using her father's copley address to send her kids to school there from Akron. News Channel 5's John Kasich is just back from Copley tonight, and he has the reaction. The reaction, Danita, is as mixed as it was the message coming out of Columbus. First Friday, then today. People, for the most part, though, don't like what she did, but don't begrudge her the second chance. Students practice into the night at Copley High School, a district that found itself in the middle of a controversy this past winter when Kelly Williams Bolar was convicted of third-degree felonies and jailed for illegally using her father's address to enroll her two daughters into Copley Fairlawn schools. At the time, newly sworn in Governor John Kasich was critical of the punishment, and when the Ohio Parole Board unanimously denied last week Williams Bolar's request for clemency, the governor stepped in today, reducing the convictions to misdemeanors. From my standpoint, I'd be a little disappointed in that, but at the same time, uh, you know, people deserve a second chance. So I, I, I guess from that standpoint, I'd be happy that she had an opportunity to, to maybe clear her name and do something good in her life. The Senator Casey himself shared, saying the penalty could exclude her from certain economic opportunities for the rest of her life. 
He went on to say, no one should interpret this as a pass. It's a second chance. As a mom, Tarina can relate. I mean, it's not like she held a gun to somebody's head or, you know, committed some kind of a huge felony crime. If Williams Bolar wanted to send her kids to a better school, Bridget says she needed to move into the district. That's what she did years ago. Even still, she says, the stain of a felony goes too far. You know, what she did was wrong, but I don't think she needs to be, uh, you know, punished severely in order not able to take care of her, her family. Well, here's the thing. The governor points out that the conviction itself was reduced. The penalty, for the most part, wasn't. williams Bolar will still have to comply with the court's original provisions that include things like probation and 80 hours of community service. But the thing is, Danita, the fact that it is no longer a felony clears the way for her to one day become a teacher if that's what she so chooses. And that's something that she yeah. says she would like to do. Exactly. All right. Okay. Now, here we go. What was the, the decision to only make this a misdemeanor versus giving you clemency or at least exonerating all of these charges? What what did they did they explain that to you or did they feel as though that because this was a misdemeanor, this was supposed to be the the price for the crime of quote unquote defrauding uh, the system? Well, the governor has stated that it was overzealous prosecution. He said it was absolutely overzealous prosecution, and it should never went that far. And so that's why he he reduced them to uh, misdemeanors. And I think, it, like I said, it definitely became very political in every in every avenue. Because um, now, before the governor gave me that, he went through the proper channel, and he had me go before the parole board, and uh, the parole board denied. Uh, the parole board did not want um, me to have any form of clemency. You know, they, they but I, I'm not for sure um, why they, they basically just kept saying that, you know, I did wrong and, and basically the, the felony is what I deserve, both felonies. In, in the state of Ohio, I don't know how it is across the board, but I'll tell you what, if you have more, if you, you can get one felony taken off as time progresses. But you defar mm. two or three felonies, you're a done deal for the rest of your life. So, <clears throat> as far as trying to, you know, get a license or, or work or, or be productive out here, it's just, it's just, you know, it's basically impossible. Um, no, it's not impossible, but it's just, you know, if you are if you're a hard worker, I guess you could, you know, be okay um, economically. But um, he just basically he just reduced everything to misdemeanors and. He kept everything as the same, you know, and I, you know, writing the, I had to write the judge, I had the mentoring program, I had the 80 hours of community service. But by that point, I had done all, I had what? done all of that, you know, except for the Wait probation. Wait a minute. Probation, mm -hmm. What the hell is the mentoring program? What was that supposed to do? Um, I, I, it was like I needed, um, you know, I needed mentors to to talk to me about, <laughs> you know, uh. Girl, did they what stop you on the wrist and say, this is how you don't tell a lie and that kind of jazz? Are you telling me that? <laughs> no, he just they just wanted me to do a, a mentoring program with whoever, you know, like, so I, I just did it at a church, and a, a local church, and, and, uh, <laughs> and documented it. <clears throat> oh, uh, were you mentoring someone else, or they were, were instructing you? I, uh, no, they they were mentoring me, you know, like. It was like Girl. a, a um, sit down, and, and they would talk to me about whatever. It, it, it was, you know, it, it was counseling. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! No, and, and, girl. And, and now, believe me, I needed counseling. I, I needed counseling. It might not have been through that, uh, but I, I needed. I needed. I needed a psychiatrist. I needed, I needed a psychologist. I, you, I needed everything. You know what? I'm sure that you did because of the the stress behind us. See, as I'm listening to it and 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 you know, just just grasping and and things from this particular story, what I'm I'm having a problem with a lot of this, and I'm sure when they throwing all these you know legalese at you, this term, that term, you know, trumped up charges or what appears to be trumped up charges, different kind of charges, they done went on into your personal and carried on. They done went and found your house records. And you said, when Dr. Phil said that on the show, I was upset about that. Well, you said that you went here, and then you said, you, and why would you do Listen, 
You know, don't sit there question me on, on this, that, and the third. I did it, damn it, and I didn't say I didn't do it. But you right. have the right to sit there and question me the way that you're trying to question me, motherfucker. Who are you? And I know that I would have said that. See, who are you to sit up here and question me about the actions that I've taken to secure my children to make sure that they were not going to be where they are? Now, here's the $25,000 question. If you had to do it over again, what would you have done differently? Um, I think if I had to do it all over again, I think I would have asked. I would have asked the school, you know. I would have told them my my predicament, my situation, and asked them, you know. Mm-hmm. That's the best, you know, that's the best what I could think of. That's it. <laughs> Okay. But since okay. it didn't happen that way, but my but you got to listen to this though. Since it didn't happen that way, and now I hope to have an opportunity to help you know many children, not just even here, just across the across the board, across the state. Because um, I'm I'm trying to develop a foundation, Kelly Williams Bowler Foundation, and I can help children um, in all aspects, from tutoring to Districts, if if one district say you can't come in, we'll have the funding where they can. You know, if they say, well, but you you can come in for this X amount of dollars, we'll be able to provide for them to do that. So you know, some things happen out of you know you you, you, you something bad happened and then you look up and something good can come out of it. You know. Exactly. But you know that's an interesting question, and and I I already know the answer. However, did, did they even attempt to try to offer you a scholarship, or they, did, 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 did they just throw bills and say, "No, you just owe this money"? Oh, you're right. That's what it was. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't offer anything. Oh no, they was. They were headstrong and just. They just ran straight to the prosecutor. They didn't. You know, I thought it was certain to proceed. Once I got into understanding everything, I thought. And a lot of people say, well, you know, in order to get an indictment, you got to have a police record. You, you know, you got got something else had to go on before the indictment. So it was a lot of things I, I thought might have been jumped, like they jumped through certain hoops or whatever to do what they did. I, I don't know because I, I wasn't there. I don't know, but it just makes you, you know, it's a lot of un, unanswered questions in a lot of this. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't know the answer to all of it. Mm. See, this is good for law students. I'm t- I'm going to throw that out there. For those of y'all who are studying law and need to get your credentials, see, a lot of this stuff now is all public record, honey. You can go and look this up and research this trial. You can research the evidence. You can research all of that to get it to where you- it can make some sense. Y'all see that all the time. That Hell, John F. Kennedy been dead for how long? And they still going in there looking at stuff. You could go and find this kind of stuff, and 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 research to see where the ball was jumped, because there is a disconnect here. Something I'm having a problem with putting all the pieces together. What was the tip off for them to say? I think that this is a problem. And why didn't they come to the parents first and say we need proof of residency first before they decided to hire a private investigator to do all of this, 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 and this? You said on the show, honey, they calling your job, mm-hmm. you know, following you. You said, I see them. you know, And if they're following you, then, of course, they're taking pictures. Now, y'all watch enough law and order and carrying on to see the private investigator in the car with the little snapshot and- camera. And at first, when, when they first started, when they first started following us, my neighbor had, uh, well, the woman who was, she was doing the same thing I was doing. She she lived in Akron, and, she, and so we would both have our kids out here. And she was telling me, she said, somebody watching us, and I'm like, really, you know? And I'm, I got a little nervous because, like I said, I had a, some predator. I don't know what he did. Some creep around my home. So I'm thinking, is it, you know, is it is it that individual? Is it, is it that person? You know? So I, I was really taken back when she first told me that. I, I never in a million years would have thought that it was the district. I, I thought it was that person that um, Right. Okay, me. right. Had, okay. Right. You know, but I don't I don't know. Okay. But it's so, I want people to make sure that they vote in their areas, the city officials, make sure that they know 
who they're voting for. Make sure that the city officials, the prosecutors, and the judges have a conscience. That's one thing I, I, I really want people to do that background and that research that they need to do, you know, when certain situations, you know, does, does it outweigh, you know, certain crimes, does the punishment fit the crime, you know, you know, it just, and a lot of people don't know what's going on because if you're not in that, if you're not at the courthouse every day, and most of us are not right. working at our own fields or whatnot, but we want to know that that those city officials can make a conscious uh, decision on 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 certain situ- you know certain situations, and so I'm mm-hmm. that is what I'm pushing right now because voting is is, is is here, and is we, we got to make sure that we have the right what we need to to make sure we got the proper people in place. Mhm. Now, n- now, okay. What uh, is going on with your daughters now? What you know? How is their educational uh, uh, needs met at this particular state, or are, have they become educational poison due to your name? You know, and, you know, are they suffering from well, they all of this of now, kids. or they, they, you know, it, it worked. It, as far as I know, it worked out. Um, Pretty good, you know. I don't know emotionally. They, they were they were disturbed for quite some time. Um, my teenager, she, you know, she worked. I work at the school that she attended for the past four years, and I remember, you know, days when it was in the heat of it all. You know, they would come home and she would, you know, pretty upset. You know, other peers and everything say, "Oh, you know, is your mom out of jail yet?" Or is your mom, you know, you know, you know, just saying little mm. jabbing, mm. so jabbing things. You know, just trying to hurt her or whatever. And and my my oldest daughter, she's very um, she's very to herself, quiet, and she's never been you know really out you know out there. So it, it put it, it put the eye on them quite a bit. And and the last name is Bolar, so it was very you know they they knew who they were. It wasn't like it was a Smith or something. Or so anyway. Um, okay. She's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, when the Smith. But, okay. Right. Dig it. You know, it wasn't like it was a popular name. So uh, right. she, she graduated from high school. She's now, this is her first semester um, uh, at a, a, a local um, little college, and, and she's doing quite well. Um, my youngest one, a gentleman, uh, anonymous, an, an anonymous uh, gentleman, uh, donated for uh, donated uh, for her to attend a private school. So she's in an all-girls oh, private beautiful. school. Oh, beautiful. In the area. Yeah, and I'm very, very, very um, happy about that. And um She's doing. She's 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 flourishing as well. So they're both doing good academically, and socially. So I'm happy about that. Oh well, good, good. And 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 after all this, now where are you mentally? I know. When, and when we first started talking, you said everything is moving and moving forward. But mentally, sweetie, you know what is your support system, and 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 what do you have in place to keep you on track? I, my family, my my daughters, my mother, they they keep me going. Um, I um, as far as you know, therapy for myself. I, I write a lot. I, you know, I, I kept journals, and that was therapeutic for me. I remember a particular, a particular uh, day. I guess I was, I don't know. I, my mother thought I was getting ready to flip out or whatever. So she called my attorney, and my attorney responded by having me go to. Um, a forensic uh, psychiatrist. So oh, wow. I go to the psychiatrist, mm-hmm, and he he does a battery of tests, and it took all day. And the first part of the test was just basically filling out uh, paperwork, you know, just me- a mental, you know, just mentally, just what, you know, do you see, you know, do you see people? Do you, what, do you see people talking to you and, and they're not there? You know, just all kind of stuff. So right. I filled that out. <laughs> and then <laughs> he gave me these... Um, what is it called? Ink spot? You ever heard of ink spots? Oh yeah, uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So dude, what? What does this? What is this? Mhm. Mhm. He placed about ten, ten in my hand, and he asked me. He said, "Go through this and see what you see." So I said, "Okay." So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking, and each one, I'm, I'm gonna say about eighty-five percent. Every time I looked at a card, I would see angels. And I'm like, look at these angels. I was just really flabbergasted. Look at, look at all these angels. 
And I guess it threw him off. He's like, well, show me the angels. What you talking about? <laughs> okay. He's like, show me what you're talking about. And I showed him. I said, don't you see? I'm going to look at this one. This one looks like an archangel. And this one here looks like, you know, it's floating. And this one here, you know, they all had wings. I just kept seeing that, just kept seeing that. And so he asked me, so are you spiritual? And I said, well, I, I like to hope I am, you know, so... And anyway, so he, he, he said that I had post I mean, to get to what you were saying, he said I had post traumatic stress, um, from all of this, which, you know, who who would not? So I'm like, Oh great, you know, I got it too and um but I I, I <laughs> fight that. I don't I don't I don't place that on me at all. I I I'm strong minded and I keep moving forward and um and that's what I try to tell anybody out here. If you got no matter what your struggles are, and a lot of times God places you in a certain situation so you can, so you can help someone else. Exactly. You know. So, and that's what, that's where, I'm, that's where I'm at right now mentally. I, I, I feel that I have a duty to help other children across the country. You know, as many as I can. Okay, Pianki says you're probably the only one in the whole town who had all their faculties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So now, as you're moving forward, you know, with your teaching degree and things, and I know you said you wanted to start your your uh, foundation and and mm-hmm. all of that. What is what would be your message to parents now? You know, who may be in the same situation, who are looking for uh, better educational opportunities. What is your particular message? You know, from out of all of this, what what is you know they say you don't, you know, um, you don't have a, a a testimony unless you don't had a test. So what is the testimony? Uh, well, my first thing is, uh, you know, don't get caught. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, that that's not it. That's not it. Um, I would, if people, you know, I, I just think that uh, you know, it's, like I said, uh, parents, parents, you know, we have parents have rights. Go into the schools. That if you're not happy and you're not satisfied, get in there and get involved. You know, and 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 now we have different things like the parent trigger law that they started in California. A lot of other uh, states are copying the same outline to that, and that's where if the school. So you need to find out if they have picket, uh, uh, parent trigger law in your area, um, and you and what it is basically is if that. Whatever subject it is, if your if your child is having issues in you know mathematics or you know or language arts, um, and you feel that they're not getting what they need from the from that instructor, then with the parent trigger law, they will replace that instructor and and mm-hmm. have another. Instructor. You no, know, you you as a parent, you have that power and that right. So you know, find out if, if they have the parent trigger law in your area. Um, and if they don't, still fight. You know, just make sure you're involved and make sure, you know, that all your ducks are in a row when it comes down to the academics uh, of your child. You know, get in there. Because let me explain something. There's so many more alternatives out here. You have magnets. You have charters. You have private schools, scholarships now for the private schools. So they, the, the, the public schools need you. So if you if you, if you decide to say hey you know I'm done with this I'm taking my I'm taking my child out and I'm putting them somewhere else they're going to be begging you to bring them back because they bring dollars to that to that school it's a business ah, okay. whether people okay. realize it or not so you know okay. you have the upper hand never think that you don't because you have the upper hand exactly Pianki says parents should be vocal and active about school choice and full vouchers in particular. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Are, uh, Interesting. Yep. Vouchers are, you know, I mean, vouchers are, are a great resource. It's, it's, it's about the parent and what the parent wants. Okay. Exactly. What the parent needs. So you might have four children, and two of your kids might need something different than the other two. Every child is completely different. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I'm, yeah. And y'all wonder why, and again, I'm going to stress this, do not get it twisted. Do not let the pundits sit up there and shake your minds 
because of the whole Big Bird thing and everybody making a joke about it. You know, he don't want to say what he he can do this for Wall Street, but don't want to save Sesame Street. But y'all are missing the bigger picture in this. When you look at this campaign for presidency and we're talking about education, we're talking about building students, we're talking about parents' rights to choose, our component, for those of you who are supporters of Mitt Romney, God bless you because I don't support him, but somebody does. My question to you is you, he says that he wants to make sure that parents have the right to choose and the right to make to to have their students go where they want. However, at the same time, he wants the states to be in control of all of that. It doesn't want any national policy, and the states are the ones that allow the schools to have districts. So, if the school districts are there, then that means it removes the parents' rights to choose because they're saying that the districts are what are, is what formulates how students are able to get into the systems. And if we're going to sit down there and if he's going to not fund PBS, public broadcasting stations across this country, that means he is taking away one of the fundamental educational tools right. in the parent homes that we have. Sesame right. Street, Electric Company, Nova, all of the Discovery Science channels. Hell, Mr. Rogers Ooh. was even on on public acts, uh, the public broadcasting, and the 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 American Classic Masterpiece Theater, which introduced culture to the children and introduced uh, a world of fantasy and play in an educational surrounding and environment. All of that particular programming were tools that the parents used in order to be an extension of the teaching tools that were bought for, that 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 uh the teachers have to cut that out means that that now wiped away your choices and then gave you something else that you have to to be worried with that is the importance of this whole big bird debacle that they that turned this into look at it from that educational standpoint Okay, look at it from there. Most of us grew up on that particular programming. Y'all see the telethons all the time. PBS is always running, saying we get this from viewers like you, the support from viewers like you. The money that comes in is a drop in the bucket. Now, y'all done heard that on all the stations. It's only $434 billion or whatever it is, and that's a drop in the bucket compared to what the debt is. And you talking about cutting it? And they can't get what we need. You can't put your – listen, let me get real carnal with you because I'm going to hit you where it hurts. Now, y'all know damn well, honey, when you got boo-boo coming over or you got that some special somebody, you put the kids where? You put them in there to go watch Sesame Street and shit to get them out of your hair. <laughs> now, okay, now, okay. <laughs> now, y'all know I ain't playing. You know damn well I ain't playing. Now, <laughs> right, right, okay? right, you're right. Now you know you know I'm real with that. So listen, this is not about the whole idea of that. This is about education. If you look at it from that standpoint, you will understand this particular argument and why that is so important. So, so, so important. If we're talking about the right to choose, this woman just up there and they had to she's still going through serving a sentence that's ridiculous as hell. Okay, you got to go to mentoring mentoring classes. Mm-hmm. The hell is and, you know, that meant to? We all, we all grew up on PBS, and PBS is one of the most educational tools. So for him to take that away, what, what what's going to happen to the next little generation that's coming up? You know, the fundamentals. Those the, 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 I'm, I remember Electric Company, and I remember sitting there, and I and that's how I learned. That's how I learned my syllables, and 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 um. You know when you when you go to break up a word and you got the two faces in front of each other and you saying exactly. you know you know now I guess I'll say jury you know like like jury like court you know or, exactly <laughs> you know you know that was called phonics that's how you learned your phonics and this that, and the other that now you got to sit up there and and buy off the TV hooked on phonics that was in schools. We learned mm-hmm. that off of Sesame Street. You learn how to say how your consonants come together. You learn mm-hmm. how the PH come together sounds like an F. You learn that on Sesame Street. You learn that's that on the electric it. company, how to sit up there and, and, and 
you, all of that, all of that. Bianchi, he says, Democrats always has always been against school choice due to demonic actions of those teachers' unions. Republicans have been supportive of a parent's right to exercise their their responsibility as a parent for what is best for their children. As soon as Obama was elected, Democrats cut the funding to the D.C. voucher program to permit poor children to attend schools like Sick Wheel Friends, where Obama's daughters attend. Okay, now I don't know about all of that. Uh, cut the funding for the voucher program. Now, now, now we have to. Do, I have to do my research on that. Right. However, I know in in is it, 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 it. I want to take this damn party out of it because see again, and you and you say the Democrats did all that, but it wasn't President Obama. Because, see, he's been fighting and has had his hands tied, and we got those rogue Democrats that want to sit up there and, and they, they Republicans in Democrat ties, that's what I call them, you know, that sit up there and went through all these particular changes. And I really believe that a lot of this was set up to make him look bad because all mm-hmm. of the stuff that he's been fighting for, his hands have been tied because of how yeah. the folks voted. Now, if you're going to remove Obama out of office and that's your choice, that's fine. But you take the most thick-ass motherfuckers with him that's tied his hands because he didn't do that by himself. And for those of you who don't like his 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 you know his policies or whatever, look at every time he introduced something and they shot it down. They tied his hands. So if you're gonna take him out of office, you take out everybody else that that mm-hmm. prevented him from doing the stuff that that needed to be done that you said should have been done. You make sure right. of that now, okay? And, and, you make and, and, sure and, and, of that. Mm-hmm. And it's and it just you know he deserves another term, and uh, and I'm I'm just saying that okay you have research for all these these diseases out here or cancer okay we'll say cancer you have okay so they haven't found the cure to cancer so you just gonna stop the program you know you just gonna stop no you keep fighting let him run his course let him run the second term he needs that so he can right. provide so he can get, get get this country back it didn't he didn't walk into the office and everything was right exactly. You know, you know exactly, and then and then, for those who you want to see, you know, a lot of these presidential plans and carrying on, they say, okay, this is going to cut, you know, this and that and the third over the next ten years. Well, honey, you only going to be in here for eight. That's two terms, okay, maximum. So where are these other two years are going to come from? We need to see how this is going to work and how you're going to navigate through it. We did that a lot of times with with presidents of the past that served two terms, that put stuff in place. Now you need the extra four years. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we'll find that out because, okay, we'll go there. He uh, he put the Obama cuts funding for D.C. voucher program and put the uh, – the uh, the uh, link up here. Okay, I'm going to, to, to allow that. A popular program that allows D.C. public schools to receive tuition for private school education has had its funding cut under President Obama's 2013 budget. Okay, so that's the new budget. Okay, we'll find – I'm going to research that. I don't know about that, so I'm going to research that, and I'll come back with that with my take on that pretty soon because I know there's a spin in that. I know it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, uh, if you're going to take him out, then take out everybody else that 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 had their share in tying his hands and not getting this country up and running. That's my whole argument. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. fight whether or not you know change your mind, but right now on this educational issue and this that and the third, this here is where you need to look. As far as choices, as far as everything is concerned, this woman's story here, honey, and she's still going through the aftermath. She's still in the restitution phase of having to pay back court costs and this, that, and the other. You just heard her say she's still being harassed by that damn Bob. What's his name? Bob what? Dyer. Dyer. Yeah, the 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 the, the Ohio columnist down there. Who goes through his little changes? I've not read what he's what you know his 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 uh, postings. However, after listening to him on that clip on the on the uh, Doctor Phil show, you can you I could YouTube that to catch the episode. I only played a couple of clips from it. You could YouTube that and watch it in its entirety. It's like in five or six pieces. So uh, YouTube it, and you find out what I'm talking about, so that you guys can understand. This here is going to be about. The entire electoral uh, understanding, 
Okay, what you uh, and we need to understand what this is. And and Pianchi continues. He says the program was created in 2004 and functioned until 2009, when Democrats in Congress threatened to cut off funding. Republicans reinstated funding for the program last year. Why? Why did they reinstate it just last year? Last year was 2011, honey. You said it ran to 2010. You, I mean, 2009. What happened in 2010 that they didn't fight for it? That's my right. question. See, uh huh. I, I told you there's a spin somewhere. <laughs> Anywho, I'm going to get into that later. Right now, I know you told me you had to go take the baby somewhere, and I've been talking and talking. And yeah, I'm going to let you get on because this here is far from over. And uh, I, I, it saddens me that this experience is taking you through the changes that it's taking you through. It is my praise report that through this, that the divine creator is going to use you as a vessel of change so that we can all get on board and stop Mm -hmm. all these heinous, old, stupid, trumped-up old charges because it doesn't make any sense. You know, it really doesn't make any sense. I, I've on, I've never been in, in, into prison. I've only been locked up on a false charge. Uh, uh, for, uh, it was 13 hours, 27 minutes, and 39 seconds, honey. I was in a holding cell, okay, right. back in 1987, honey. And uh, that was enough for me. And I was a good Samaritan helping somebody change a tire on the car and come to find out the damn car was stolen and I didn't know it. Okay. So, yes. So with that, I, it is my praise report that this becomes a vessel, that you are being used as a vessel of change, and that through this journey, through this journey, and through this process, because the process is sandpaper for the soul. It is heinous. It is hell when you go through it because you've got to go through the muck and the mire. But when you finished, you're going to come out polished and smooth and your authentic beauty is going to shine. And the authentic beauty of all this is going to be the work that is created for change and for education. And my sister, I I offer you this platform here with Dishing Tea with Big Meech for any time you're ready, if you're writing a book, if you're sitting up there got a plan of action, or the, when the foundation is up and running and you need a fundraiser, need to talk about it, I'm offering you this platform as long as God gives me breath to have it, that we are going to partner with you to make this happen. You hear me? We're going to birth this baby, girl. Okay? We're going to birth this Thank baby. So yes, we Thank are. You. Thank you. I do have, a, and I do, uh, I am writing a book about the whole situation. It's not ready yet. So I will definitely, you know, connect with you then, too. So thank you so much. And everyone that's listening, thank you so much. And, you know, keep fighting for education. Our, our kids is, is the future. Exactly. Okay. Okay, and if and if we believe that, then we have to be the ones to set the example. Now, we done became the old fogies, y'all. Those of us who are 70s babies and carrying on, when we were in, when we were the youngsters and carrying on, we looked at the old folks and did not want to listen and this stuff. Well, now we done became them. You know, these are mm-hmm. our children, soon to be our grandchildren, that's going to be in this particular educational system. Y'all see the toys. The toys are now all computer toys. All the toys are cell phones, the little laptops, the little this, the little. The kids are coming up in this era. Now, we the ones that got to get up, up to snuff with it and learn how to make this work and how to make it affordable, how to make it accessible, how to make it as grand as it is, because it don't make sense that the United States is not number one in education anymore. We're somewhere down like in the teens and in the early 20s. That's ridiculous that we're supposed to be the superpower of the world. That's mm-hmm. ridiculous in education. So with that, my darling, do you have a, a, a Facebook YouTube, whatever it is, this is the time. If you want folks to contact you or whatever, this is the whatever whatever you want them to know, dish it right now. Okay. Um, I do have a Facebook, and it's Kelly Williams Folar, and it's Kelly with two E's. It's K-E-L-L-E-Y, and then Williams-Bolar, B as in boy, O-L-A-R. 
Um, if you want to connect with me, I, I do have a website, but it won't be up until the 15th of October. And that right there will help, you know, me with my foundation. And I, you know, I also have an Ohio Parents Union, and but I want that foundation because I want to be able to help, you know, many as many as I can across the nation. So just that's coming. And um, you can always reach out. I do speeches. Um, I was in Chicago a couple of um Days ago, well, actually Saturday, and and uh, for Mr. Uh, Kevin Johnson, um, the, the the mayor for Sacramento, and that was a, a very inspiring um, opportunity um, to you know speak and tell the story in its entirety uh, to many people. So you know, if you want to reach out to me and and, and if you want to need to speak at a, a church or a function or whatever's going on uh, in your community. Just reach out uh, right now during my, uh, my Facebook. And, again, that that name is Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, William Bolar, and I'll be waiting. And thank you so right. much for having me on. Honey, thank you for reaching out. And like I said, honey, your story, it hits home. And, I, and let me say, uh, just on behalf of the nation and, and, and the world, because we're international now, and that is what your father has gone through. It is. It hurts me to know that this particular situation, you know, the stress of all this um, went, you know, and, and affected him in such a way. And I am hoping and and praying that you live for him as you live in your authenticity. Let the lessons that your father instilled in you become the moniker that you stand on as you teach others about education and using your platform to honor his life. Yes, mm. sir, I will, yes. Okay. And one more thing. I, I want to say thank you. I want to thank, say thank you to all the people who, uh, you know, signed my petition for the governor to look at. I want to say thank you to people in China and Japan and India. I'm not for sure who, you know, all listen in, but um, – and let me see, I said China. I know for sure it was China, Japan, uh, Canada, and India. So, you know, I just want to say thank you because I never had the opportunity to say thank you for people who reached out to me. All right. All right. And on that note, my baby, honey, go kiss them babies, and I know you got to get them down to go and take care of your business. Yes. So yes. Yes. thank you, thank you, thank you for your time and for dishing your tea with Big Me, honey. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, baby. You too. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, honey, that is Ms. Kelly williams Bolar. And, uh, yes, honey, I'm just very thankful. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling myself getting a little emotional, a little proclaimed, because, child, I was not ready to have heard the story about her dad um, being taken from us that way. And, and we all know with with parents who have aged and carrying on when stress like this and you know, when you're worried about your child, honey, that there becomes, uh, it takes a, an effect on the body. And I, I'm, I'm very saddened by that, uh, by that piece. And, and, and those who are responsible for that ought to be ashamed of themselves. But that's okay because I really believe everything happens for a reason. We may not understand it, but everything happens for a reason. I want to uh, end on this particular quote where Pianchi says, honey, I have been following these educational issues as it applies to black children since the 80s. I remember Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn and even in Detroit with the late Clifford Watson creation of the Malcolm X Academy. Let's support what's right rather than these political parties. And I totally agree 1,000%. Support what is right. Let's do the right thing. And make sure that we get these folks in here the way they ought to be and the way that it, that it should be. Okay? With that in mind, my darlings, honey, oh, yeah, I got to go to the donut factory tonight, honey. I'm going in early at 8 p.m. So let me get myself together. Uh, I'm going to bid you a good day. For those of you, honey, who, who uh, want to come back next week, I invite you to come back as we will be dishing tea with the one and only songstress herself, Sherelle, will be my guest next week. So come on back and enjoy yourself as we get into her and understanding, you know, what it is um, that she has to offer from 
her perspective of being in the in the entertainment business and um uh, as she says some light, she took Whitney Houston's death rather hard. So this is her first time coming public, honey, since the passing of our sister, Miss Whitney Houston, and uh, we'll be dishing tea with her. So at this particular moment, honey, finish all of your crumpets, honey, because the tea has been dished, and you've been dishing tea, darlings. Ha-ha! With Big Me, honey, if you love me, tell a friend. If you hate me, tell an enemy. But do know this, one way, shape, style, form, or fashion, this thing here will move forward. Until we meet again, honey, at the right time, at the right place, I will talk with you guys at that time. Thanks. Bye-bye. The unstoppable, do the impossible, we the undeniable, royalty indefinable. Ford knows that your vehicle is a reflection of you, so they design beautifully innovative, stylish cars like the Explorer, Escape, and Fusion to make your journey safer, smarter, and more dynamic. Ford, born to roll. Roll Learn more at IamBornToRoll.com. Roll